so hello everyone welcome back on another video on digital signal processor in the last video we have seen the rotary encoder interfacing with c2000 microcontroller therefore in this video we are going to implement the rotary encoder with fine and coarse features and that fine and coarse features can be implemented with the rotary encoder along with the push button and here we are going to use the external hardware instruct to change the mode from fine to the coarse and coarse to the fine so if you want to subscribe my channel please go and subscribe the channel for the latest update So in the last video we have seen the rotary encoder and which is having three pins pin a pin b and the ground and where the pin a and pin b are connected with the pull up registers and the pin a and b are connected with the gpio 0 and the gpio 1 where g pin is connected with the ground pin that is middle pin and we have seen the the concept of rotary encoder how it will be moving in the clockwise direction and anti clockwise directions and where we have taken the reference of A signals, A pins and uh, based upon the uh, falling edge and the rising edge of the A, we are able to, we are measuring the state of the B and based upon the state of the B with respect to A, we are finding the directions of the rotary encoder that is moving in the clockwise and anti-clockwise directions. So here the thing is we can able to increase or decrease the values in the constant manner either fixed value for example now what we want to do we want to change the values in the variable range so how to configure the rotary encoder uh, to change the values of the uh, any constant in the uh, variable way so that can be implemented with the help of push button so the push button symbol is given here and uh, which is having two pins that is black color and uh, this black color pin is connected to the GPIO pin and that is connected with the pull up register. So whenever this push button is not released, not connected, not pressed, in this case the GPIO pin is connected, this black pin of the push button is connected with the GPIO and it will use the high voltage. Whenever the push button is pressed, these two pins will be short circuit and the ground will be appear here so it will go to the zero voltage level. So whenever this push button is released, it will again regain its state that is VCC. So we are changing the fine and coarse features for the rotary encoder during the during the falling edge of the push button and the rising edge of the push button. So now we are going to implement this on this code compose studio for C2000 microcontrollers. So here you can see that we have uh, created a project called rotary encoder and we have included all the necessary files that is required to complete this project. And if you want to learn how to create a project in the code compose studio, you can check the link in the description box. So we have added all the necessary files and we have included this encoder file codes.c files in the programs here. So now in the .c files, we have included all the header files and uh, we have included all the necessary files that is required to completion this project. So for the rotary encoder along with the push button, we have to include the GPIO pin, we have to configure the GPIO pins. So to configure the GPIO pin, we have we have written the function that is UART pin initializations. And here you can see that we have initialized the GPIO 0 and 1 that is for rotary encoder and GPIO 2 for the push button. And pin number 18 and 19 we have used for serial communication interface and the direction of the pin 0, 1 and 2 is considered as the input pin and uh, 
the direction of the 18 and 19 is considered as the output and input that is for serial transmission and receiver respectively so once we have configured this one we have disabled we have used the pull up disable register that is zero so once we have done initialize the gpo registers now what we will do we have to initialize the system 4 pi control registers pi vector table and so on so now we will come to the main loop and we have to initialize the device initializations and this, this initialization will initialize the clock and the peripherals. Once we have called the device initialization function, after that we have to call the device init GPIO pins. So this will initialize the, all the GPIO pins for serial automatic controllers and we have to disable all the pending interrupts. Further, we have to initialize the UART pin initialization. It will initialize the GPIO pins for the system configurations. And uh, this is for serial, serial initializations. And uh, this is serial initialization we have done in the previous video. And you can check the link in the description box. Further, we have to initialize the interrupt initialization module. And interrupt, we have to initialize the vector table and uh, pi control register and the pi vector table. Once we have done this, now our main task is to uh, change the find and put features. So, and that is implemented based upon the external hardware interrupt. So, whenever external hardware interrupt is coming, that is xint1 underscore int, in this case, it should go to the find course adjustment functions. So in the find port adjustment functions, we have checked the mode to current mode. If current mode is false and whenever we are pressing the push button, it will again come to the find course int adjustment interrupt module and it will check if the current mode is false, it will change the current mode to find and otherwise it will change the current mode to false. And this we are going to print on a serial bus and uh, we have acknowledged the external hardware interrupt so it can wait for the another interrupt so now once we have initialized the find course features in the interrupt further the next thing we need to remember that how this controller will know that at which gpio pin the external hardware interrupt need to be configured so to configure the external hardware interrupt on the GPIO2 because the push button we have connected on the GPIO2, we have to use the input X bar, input force bar registers. And uh, if you see the external hardware interrupt one that is connected to the input four, and uh, for that one we have used the GPIO2 on the GPIO2 and the external interrupt one that need to be connected directly. So once we have connected the external interrupt on the GPIO2, we have to enable the external control, external interrupt register. So enable can be done with the help of this call of line. And at what point it should generate the interrupt? It should generate the interrupt at the falling edge of the clock, falling edge of the input signal. So whenever we are pressing the push button, in this case, the voltage will be dropping from VC to VCC to zero, so it will be falling edge of the input signal. So whenever falling edge of the input signal is coming, the interrupt should generate. So it is using the polarity one. Now for the external interrupt, we have to look at the pi vector table and the pi control register. At what location the pi vector table uh, external interrupt is located in the pi vector table? In pi vector table. So it is located at uh, 1.4. So we are config configuring the external interrupt at the 1.4 in the code. And you can see that we have configured the pi interrupt enable register dot bit dot interrupt x4 equals to 1. So we have configured this pi control register for the external interrupt. So once we have done this, we are enabling the uh, interrupt enable request and uh, we are doing the EINT and ERT and global and local interrupts enabling. So once we have done this, uh, we will come to the encoder reference and in the encoder reference, the, everything will, will remain the same uh, as a previous video 
and uh, the whois link is given in the description box and uh, if we are checking the current mode if current mode is fine then the encoder position is increased by 1 if current mode is 4 then encoder position is increased by 10 and that is in the clockwise directions and uh, in the anti clockwise direction if current mode is fine we are reducing the encoder position by 1 and if encoder mode is forced, then we are reducing the uh, encoder position by, by minus 10 and that is moving in the anticlockwise directions. Once this is done, we are storing the updating the last states and returning the encoder positions. So this is what uh, we are going to implement. Now what we will do, we will debug this, build this project. And uh, we will debug this project. Now we will run this project and we will open the terminal. So we have opened the terminal and we have connected the COM port for with the terminal. Now what we will do having the rotary encoder and you can see the rotary encoder is also having the push button. So the one side it is having the three pins, another side it is having the two pins and that is pins for the push button. So we have connected this pin with the register and this is for this is uh, the 3.3 volt supply and the yellow button is connected on the GPIO two pins and the another pin that is this pin is connected in the ground of the launch pad and this uh, UART connector uh, is connected on the pin number 18 and 19 of the uh, launch pad. Now what we will do, we will uh, press the push button so you can see that it is changing the mode to 0 and it is further to changing the mode 1 by pressing the push button. Again mode 0 and mode 1. Now we are rotating in the clockwise direction so it is changing the value. Now again we will pressing. So you can see that uh, it is changing the fine features, so 56, 57, now again, so this is the way you can implement the fine end course feature for C2000 microcontroller and this video you can share with your friends, colleagues and industry partners so most of them can be beneficial and they can include this in their projects. And uh, if you want me to make such kind of the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel and contribute to my channels. Thank you. Thank you very much.